Hello, good morning and welcome. My name is Liz and this is Shot for Shot. The show where I take a shot for every movie in a beloved franchise and then rank them. Yeah, it's Liz. Yeah, it's Liz. Taking shots and doing stuff with Liz. Today I'll be ranking the 23 movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And since I live in America where there is not free healthcare, I will absolutely not be taking 23 shots. I put a poll on my Instagram for how many shots I should take and the large majority voted eight. So we're gonna try. Also, I'm reading these movies from memory. I sincerely promised that I watched them all when they came out. I don't believe you. If you couldn't tell who I'm dressed as, I'm obviously the Scarlet Witch. Can't you tell by my signature Olsen under eyeliner? I'm not wearing fingerless gloves because I don't smoke clove cigarettes or listen to ska. But like, we can pretend. And just like that, I'm Natasha Romanoff. You're probably thinking that I could have gotten some Marvel costume for super cheap because of Halloween clearance. And I was thinking that too until I got a Wonder Woman costume that was two sizes too small and then shit myself in the parking lot of Spirit Halloween. Don't say I didn't try! And I could have painted myself green to look like Gamora, but I've kind of already done that already. Also, I didn't want to. So shot number one. One down, seven to go. In last place, ranked number 23 is Captain America Civil War. It's Diet Avengers, and I don't buy any movie that has superheroes fighting against each other. Like, just talk it out. Like, his name is Captain America, so you think that he'd be okay with, like, voting. But they just fight. What's more American? In 22nd place is Iron Man 2. I simply remember nothing that happens in this movie. I think there's that evil bald guy in a big suit, but, like, also, doesn't that happen in the first movie? I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. But I also haven't seen it since it came out. In 21st place is The Incredible Hulk. I do love Mark Ruffalo. Who can say where the road goes? But mostly just in 13 on going on 30. Like the only thing I remember is him having the revelation of wearing sweatpants <laughs> because they stretch. And like maybe he was in South America. Gamma radiation. There, I'm just saying words now. It's time for another. Another! another. <coughs> Shot number two. In 20th place is Thor the Dark World. Like, I'm pretty sure that this is when Loki had his identity crisis. And that bums me out because I really feel like we decide who we are as people. He's like, oh, I'm an ice monster. I understand lashing out because you've been lied to your whole life, but also know that it was for your protection. <sighs> I don't know, man. I just think people change too much for it to matter whether or not he was that blue ice guy. Because he can still be a blue nice guy. That's a bar right there. Bars. In 19th place is Avengers Age of Ultron. I'm pretty sure this is when Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver get introduced and then Quicksilver immediately dies. I do love that actor because of Angus Thong's imperfect snogging, but also I like the DC Quicksilver a whole lot more. Like, how could you even try to be Evan Peters in that slow-mo kitchen scene? You can't. Go away, Tate. You're all I want. You're all I want. <laughs> I think a whole Russian village gets yeeted up into the sky. We're breaking We're free. Why is it always in Russia? Ultron is just a robot? Did Tony Stark make Ultron? Let's take another shot. Shot number three. Okay, I'm cosplaying as all of the Russian citizens who had to run away in Age of Ultron. And I was cold. In 18th place is Spider-Man Far From Home. I like this movie and it's cute on its own, but as a part of the MCU and directly following Avengers Endgame, it's a little lackluster. Like, I guess I understand it acted as like a reset for the franchise after so many deaths. But I mean, it's just okay. I love Zendaya, I love Tom Holland. Have you noticed the funny sidekick best friends are always like short fat kids? Whenever they let short fat kids be the main character, give me a call. Just your phone! In 17th place is Iron Man 3. All I remember is Iron Man has PTSD and then Pepper Potts is a badass. I just feel like it would have been a lot more impactful if they had like a platonic relationship and she's a badass. No, Tony Stark should go to therapy before he gets in a long-term relationship. Does that resonate with any of you? Go to therapy! Let's take another shot. Am I supposed to have taken 
23. I'm gonna do quick mess. Under eye liner is great if you hate your eyes. Shot number four. In 16th place is Captain America the Winter Soldier. Again, I feel like all of the conflicts could have been solved by people like talking to each other. I think this is when Captain America and Black Widow kiss. You and I are going to make a statement together. Oscar is my friend. I'd rather not. How does Bucky end up in Africa? Airplanes. I love a good old brainwashing. I also love someone you thought was lost because you time traveled actually isn't moment. In 15th place is Avengers Infinity War. This is when they beat the shit out of Loki, right? No. I think this is when they beat the shit out of Loki. It's not. It's like the beginning of the Avengers fight being like pushed out into the universe. So them and Guardians of the Galaxy can like um, intersect. In 14th place is Captain America the First Avenger. This is like the first time we get a superhero that like is a good person. Am I wrong? Yeah, see me throwing myself on bonds in front of army officers so I get shredded. And I do love Peggy Carter. Oh my God, it's so sad. I said I like it earlier, but it is so sad when they're separated from time travel and then end up seeing the person that they might have loved later. And the only other example I can think of is Sally Sparrow, but that shit hurt it. Great fucking pickup line. If you came up to me and said, can I get your number? Cause life is short and you are hot. I probably wouldn't give it to you, but I'd think about it. <laughs> Shot number five. Number 13 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Like this is an okay sequel, but it gets major points for having Paul Rudd in it. And as a dad, whoo! Like I obviously don't want to have kids right now, but like if Paul Rudd said that he wanted me to have his kids, I'm pregnant. Can I be pregnant? They find Ant-Man's mom in the quantum realm. That's amazing. I mean, how can you pass up Michelle Pfeiffer? I love Stardust. Oh, and that guy's Daredevil. Full circle, guys, full circle. Like, if I were a superhero, I'd want to be one of the superheroes who isn't good enough to be called into the Avengers, um, but just fights crime locally. Jessica James, Lucas Cage, Daredevil. I'm trying to prove that I am a Marvel fan, but I'm not annoying about it. I forgot to say shot number six. In 12th place is Doctor Strange. Upon reflection, I should have ranked this a lot lower, but it's too late now. I'm just kind of sick of the whole shtick where there's like Asian culture, but then we focus on the white person appropriating it, you know? You talking to me? Also, it's Benedict Cumberbatch. He's like the whitest white that ever whited. Like he can't eat horseradish. It's too spicy. I do love portals and time travel though, so. And I do love Tilda Swinton, so. In 11th place is Spider-Man Homecoming. It has Donald Glover in it, so it's automatically in the top 50%. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. I don't really remember what happens, but like it's fun and he like gets powers, but it's awkward. And I think that's the best part of Peter Parker as a character is that he's so awkward, but is very kind and sincerely good, you know? I think I love Spider-Man because Peter Parker just like is my type. Not that I'm into high schoolers. I mean, when I was a high schooler. In 10th place is Thor. Honestly, I kind of love that we just haven't seen Natalie Portman in 10 years. You're breaking my heart. There's like science in this one and I like love that for scientists. And it's like Thor's self-discovery. And then he smashes that and says another. So obviously it's an incredible movie. Shot number seven. I want you to know it is 1 p.m. <laughs> Number nine is Captain Marvel. I mean, like, she's probably gay. Jude Law, is Jude Law in this? Jude Law is in this movie, and I'm a thousand percent sure of it. In my freshman year, I thought I wanted to be a geneticist because of Gattaca, but I think I just really had a crush on Jude Law. I think I only thought Captain Marvel was really good because it was like female representation, um, and so I just cried because that was nice. 
Of course I love Brie Larson. Hello again, friend of a friend, the new you will. Oh my God, Chris Evans was in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Full circle, man, full circle. I feel like Brie Larson does a good job of like being confident and powerful without like sacrificing femininity, femi and then an enemy. Number eight is the Avengers. I'm so confused. What happens in Infinity War? Okay, I was right about Infinity War being shit, but I just didn't remember what happened. <laughs> Number 16, Avengers Infinity War. This one's shit. It's like the part one of Avengers Endgame. It's just like everyone getting together and that could have been done via group message in like 10 minutes, you know? Everybody dies, that's a bummer. But like, you know that they'll all come back. Especially like Spider-Man, because I was like, they can't fucking kill Spider-Man. He's a tiny itty bitty little baby teenager boy. And number eight, so the Avengers. This is when Hulk beats the shit out of Loki. They're in New York. Everything always happens in New York, doesn't it? Shot number eight. forgot about Hawkeye as a character because he's kind of boring. In the arms of the angel. I think this is actually when Iron Man sacrifices himself and then they eat shawarma and so the next time he sacrifices himself he actually dies and they don't get shawarma. Classic. I confirmed aim drunk. You're welcome. This is what you wanted you evil villain. Sorry, did you want to hear what I was saying? In seventh place is Guardians of the Galaxy, while Chris Pratt is arguably the worst Chris. Um, the movie is like pretty funny and cool and like the soundtrack does slap. I mean like a man stuck in the 80s in space that has to be a good movie. In sixth place, it's Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2. Delving into Nebula and Gamora's relationship. I love that. Mantis, I love her. Drox? Drox? What's his name? Drax? Is it Drax? I said Drox because he looks like a pile of rocks. Drax! Uh, his weird dad that wants his power but fucked a bunch of different species so he could take over a planet? Is that what happened? The whole thing with him discovering Yondu, like really loved him and was his only true father. Incredible. And then like Yondu's funeral is beautiful. It's a beautiful moment. In fifth place is Ant-Man. I mean, Paul Rudd as a dad. That is number one in my heart. Number five on my list. I feel like they sneak into a place and they use everybody's skills to their advantage and then he turns into a tiny little Ant-Man. I don't need to remember anything else except that it's good. Number four, Thor Ragnarok. Obviously this one is in my top five because I have a crush on Taika Waititi. I mean, Jeff Goldblum. Yes. Not only is there a Roman Colosseum type fighting with a Greek god and then the Hulk, but there's also my bitch. What the fuck is her name? What's her name? Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. And Tessa Thompson as a Valkyrie. This movie is amazing. It just doesn't fit in as well with the MCU. I'm not mad. Okay, in third place is Avengers Endgame. Are you happy? I mean, it is good. You know how much I love time travel. A bunch of people die permanently. Incredible. Everyone shows up in the longest, hey, we're all here, and that's great. Heroes working together. The opposite of the worst movie, Captain America Civil War. Thanos, that big old bitch is defeated, but like against 36 other characters 
feel like they could have done it sooner, but it's okay. It is good, it is meaningful, it is impactful, it is third place. In second place is Black Panther. And let me tell you why. This movie has such good world building and Michael B. Jordan is hot. I don't care that Killmonger is evil because he's hotter than he ever could be evil, you know? Literally the costume design for Black Panther is fucking amazing. All of this inspiration from African tribes, it's amazing! I mean, the representation of a black superhero and multitudes of black women who stand strong alongside him, it's so good. From the mountain. Denai Gurira, um, an award-winning playwright? In first place is the original Iron Man. I mean, this movie is absolutely iconic. Robert Downey Jr. is amazing in this movie and is basically inextractable from his character, Tony Stark. This young playboy who has a lot of problems, but you know, tries his best and has daddy issues, let's be honest. I mean, it's amazing. This movie not only represents the beginning of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, but also the comeback of Robert Downey Jr. himself. I mean, the soldiers trying to take selfies with him and them doing the peace sign and then everybody blowing up. That's like the only thing I remember, but it's so good. I mean, I love science that I don't even understand being talked about in movies because I can at least be like, oh, well, they're trying to be smart rather than just, oh, superhero, I'm strong, blah, 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 blah. He's absolutely perfect for the role and I don't know who else could play it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching Shot for Shot. If you disagree with my rankings, please let me know in the comments and I'll tell you why you're wrong. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share and stay tuned next week for a new video. Bye! Mm, monkey. Can you shut the fuck up?